everyone, I'm Alan. And I'm Esty. And I'm Becca. And we're your hosts for Hawaiian Electric's What Happens When video series. In What Happens When, we take a look at questions our customers ask us. And we ask our employees to find the answers for us using demonstrations and experiments. So today, we're going on a field trip. Ooh, field trip. So where are we going, Alan? We're going to take a visit to our System Operations <laughs> Command Center, or SOCC, which is a perfect place to ponder today's question. And that question would be? What happens when a storm causes a power outage? So you mean if like the power goes out? If the power goes out, it gets dark. There's no lights. Duh. <laughs> yeah, if the power goes out and the lights go out, it gets dark. But if a storm does hit us and we do lose power, heaven forbid that ever happens and uh, knock on wood, that we have calm and safe winds. But what happens on our side? What does the electric company do? Ah, I get it. What do our employees do to safely and quickly restore power to our customers? Bingo. Oh look, we're here. Here we are in our System Operations Command Center, where our Oahu employees respond to and manage trouble calls about power outages. Each of our three companies, Hawaiian Electric, Maui Electric, and Hawaii Electric Light, has a command center similar to this one. And each of the companies responds to outages in similar ways. In 2014, Tropical Storm Izel entered the Hawaiian waters and impacted the Hawaiian Islands. The Puna area on Hawaii Island was particularly hit hard. Here to explain the recovery effort is Kenyon Beals from Hawaii Electric Light. Hello everyone, it's Kenyon from Hawaii Electric Light on the beautiful island of Hawaii. As Alan said, we hope we never encounter a storm that's strong enough to cause a power outage. But in the event that we do, the electric companies on Hawaii Island, Maui County, and Oahu have a plan and are prepared to safely restore power as quickly as possible to our customers. So here's some basic steps we take to safely restore power after a storm. Please keep in mind that every situation is different and that each company has its own specific process. Step 1. Safety and Assessment as with anything our companies work on, our top priority is the safety of our communities and our crews. Our first step in any power restoration effort is to address public safety and assess damage. Field crews assess the extent of any damage caused by a storm and the specific materials and equipment that need to be repaired or replaced. This can include utility poles, transformers, and power lines. Step 2. Repairs High Voltage Transmission Lines Transmission lines serve as the backbone of our electric systems. When these towers and lines are damaged, they must often be repaired before other parts of the system can work. This step sometimes involves flying in materials, equipment, and personnel to remote areas. It may also involve clearing fallen trees and debris, as well as digging holes for utility poles. Step 3. Repairs Substations Substations help to transform voltage as electricity travels from our generating stations to your neighborhoods and can serve thousands of electric customers. When a major outage occurs, we need to address issues at substation sites first to determine if the problem stems from lines feeding into a substation or at the substation itself. Step 4. Repairs Distribution Lines Distribution lines carry power to large groups of customers in communities or neighborhoods. These need to be checked and repaired before. Step 5. Repairs Neighborhood Lines In this final step, tap lines are checked and repaired to restore power to the neighborhood. We can then verify that a customer's electrical connecting point is safe to use. At this stage, we can often incrementally restore larger groups of customers using a process called switching, transferring them to an alternate circuit, if available, to restore power. Remember, these steps are slightly different across our three companies, but the basic underlying principle is the same throughout, taking the necessary precautions to ensure the safety of our communities and crews, and doing systematic assessments and checks to restore power as quickly as possible. Mahalo guys, back to you. I always wanted to say that. Now that was cool. Yes it was, and it was pretty involved. Yeah, I had no idea all the steps we had to take to restore power safely. You know what Becca, you bring up a good keyword, safety. The electric companies are all about safety. And as a matter of fact, I think Essie has a safety segment that she wants to share with hmm. everyone. That I do. Today's safety segment is about portable generators. Many families have portable generators as part of their emergency preparedness kit. Portable generators emit carbon monoxide and odorless and poisonous gas. For this reason, generators should never be used indoors. And even when using the generator outdoors, remember to keep them well away from open doors, windows, or vents. For more emergency preparedness tips, 
Download our free handbook at www.hawaiianelectric.com slash prepare. And remember, safety first, safety always. Great safety segment, Esty. Yeah, great job. And there you have it. That's what happens when a storm causes a power outage and what our crews do to safely restore power as quickly as possible. Check in with us again in October for another episode of What Happens When. For more safety tips, visit our website at hawaiianelectric.com. Thanks for joining us. Aloha. Aloha.